This is Debbie with Crazy Bees Urban Farming. <laughs> There's a hummingbird buzzing around my head right now. It is about 3.30 in the afternoon. On well, hold Saturday. on, I'm not paying attention to you. Okay, you're back. <laughs> um, we are going to do some planting. From research that I've read, it's better to plant in the late afternoon, early evening. Um, so the plants have the night to acclimate to their new surroundings. These plants are beans, and I have some sunflowers. I have a titan. I have a What's a Californian. titan? A titan is one of the ones that can get up to 14 feet tall um, and produce really big heads. And I'm thinking that it will give good shade to these beans as they're coming up the teepee that I made. Um, we are going to take these and I'm going to plant them right next to the pole and then we're going to help it to uh, climb the pole. And as I have told you before, we have an issue with rats and we did see another rat in the, in the yard. As you can see, we have um, cameras <laughs> because we were trying to figure out what was eating our stuff. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> have a colorful garden. And I am actually going to. There's plant actually these. a story behind the cameras as well. And I'm going to plant these and then I'm going to cover them with tool um, to try to keep them out. So we're going to see if that works. So we're going to start doing some planting. Um, I'll show you how I'm doing a couple of these and then we'll do a time lapse. Bean right here is the Royal Burgundy. This is going to give us purple beans. Um, I had some last year and they were just so delicious. Now I'm going to be attaching a seed starting video that I had done at the middle of February. Now is the beginning of February um, that I started these and I have since up potted them and now they are just, they're ready to go into the garden. And as you can see, um, we're going to show you a, a picture of what one of the beds looked like um, earlier. And today I took the time to fill up the beds with more dirt and more soil. And um, my compost, I do my own compost. Um, so we put that in there, we put some worm castings in there, and Kellogg's raised bed mix, um, the organic raised bed mix. So when you're doing that, you wanna kind of put your fingers in between here and then turn it upside down. Just give it a good squeeze. And these have only been in here a couple weeks and you can see how much they've already just taken off. They are just ready to go. We're gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna work that soil all the way around this plant so it doesn't have any air and oh he's gonna be so happy just tuck him in there really nice and then as he starts growing we're going to get him trained to go up because these are all pole beans so they will have the little runners and then we're gonna put that little the guy right there so we remember who he is and this guy is the Blue Lake. And when I hardened them off, he didn't like being outside so much. So he's, he got a little bit, um, he got a little sad. So hopefully he'll turn himself around. And when I'm done, I will water these guys in tonight. Oh, look at all that. Look at that root system right there. Beautiful. And you want it to be level with your dirt. The only things that you really want to plant with the stem further down than the dirt level is your tomatoes. Everything else you want to keep pretty well at soil level. And see in this guy, we can already start kind of training him to well, he'll work his way up there. And this is another Royal Burgundy.
Okay, and then we got a little sunflower right here. This is the Titan that I was talking to you about. They're harder to get out of these little pods than the bigger cups. Oh, well look at that. Last year I tried doing it by seed just into the ground with hardly any amendments and they didn't do very well. So I'm hoping this guy gets a little bit bigger. I wasn't able to save any seeds from the last one. Like I said, we're learning together. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Crazy Bees. Well, we are gonna spice things up a little bit today. We are going to start our seedlings for our peppers. And I wanted to go through kind of my process of how we start our seeds. I watched a lot of videos and taken in a lot of information on exactly what you should do for safety and for the best seed starts. So we're gonna start here with our mix. So my mix that I use is the Purple Cow Organics. I've tried several different kinds. I have just found that I really like this one. I've gotten good germination um, using this product. So I'm sticking with this one. I have used other organics, um, but I found that I really like this one. The next step is I just put it in a bowl and right now it's dry. You can make your own. It is just a mix of perlite, uh, you can use cocoa core, um, you can use peat. It just, it just, you just need a medium for your seeds to start in. Um, it doesn't have to have any fertilizer or anything in it for the seeds to start germinating. Um, and you want to plan out your seeds, usually six to eight weeks before your last frost date. So here in Arizona, zone B, 9B, our estimated last frost date is around Valentine's Day. So right now I'm sitting pretty good at starting these and tomatoes. They'll be able to go out around that time. Um, you have some other seeds that um, need even warmer weather and warmer soil. So I don't want to start those just yet because then they'll start going crazy before um, it's time to take them outside to plant. And the bees have a chance to make them crazy. <laughs> yes. And that is why we call our channel Crazy Bees because last year I had planted some cucumbers and some squash and we had so many bees in our backyard, which was wonderful. I love pollinators and I'll do just about anything to bring them in, but they cross pollinated my stuff and I ended up with these, we call them cuckoo melons. They were, uh, they looked like cucumbers, but they were cantaloupe inside and they tasted amazing. They kind of had a mix of the two. So that's why we're crazy bees. So um, I'm starting with this uh, teapot full of boiling water. I don't know if you can see the steam coming out of the pot. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour it in here and just pour in a little bit at a time and mix it in. You want your soil to be kind of like you would like your compost. You want it kind of spongy, but you don't want to saturate it. And then once we get this to the right medium, then we are going to let it cool off a little bit because there's no way I'm putting my hands in this soil right now. And then we're going to be spicing everything up with these seeds. We have a hope of making some amazing salsa this year. So my husband just really loves things spicy. So we're going to see what we can do with this. So as you can see, we're kind of getting it mixed in. And it is hot. And the reason you want to do this is so that you can kill any type of bacteria that might be in here or any kind of fungus. Like I said, it's just a planting medium. 
but this helps to decrease the chance of any kind of bacteria because you want to give your seeds the best start as possible. And here in Arizona, if you do everything right, your pepper plants can be perennials. If like during this winter, when we got our couple days of frost, we didn't get much, uh, we covered them and they made it through it. So right now we've got some habaneros out on our um, uh, pepper plants and they are ripening up and looking orange and beautiful. So we're excited about that. So I'm gonna see if I can do this without burning myself. So you can see that it's, let me. So if I squeeze this, you don't see anything coming out of it, but it's nice and firm. And then it'll just, it kind of breaks apart. So right now we're gonna let this cool off. And once this is cool, we'll come back to you and we'll start putting our seeds in our trays. Hi everybody, welcome back. Okay, we finally got all of the pods filled. Uh, we did add a couple more. We added the Datil and the Carolina Green, or Korean Dark Green, and one more of the Dragon's Breath. Um, so now we have them in this tray um, for, for watering, and I've also got it on a heat mat. My husband's also got me set up with a timer over here. You want to start at 16 to 18 hours of light um, once they are germinated so that they're getting plenty of light. Now we need to bring this down to the level right here of the pots so that they're getting that getting that light. I should have done this first, but we're gonna give them a little drink. I just took a, um, a water bottle and poked a bunch of holes in the top of it. And once these get going, I'll water from the bottom. That helps keep down the little black flies that you get. Um, one thing that I did do though, is I went out and bought these little guys. They're little sticky tabs. So those little black flies will get on those little tabs and it keeps those under control. Another thing that I also started under my grow lights was sweet potatoes. It's that time of year where you can start sweet potatoes in, either in a jar or I do them in this little cake pan with uh, a soil medium. This is potting soil. And once they start growing like this, we can put them in a jar and get their roots going before we take them out. We'll cover more on that later. I also have those under a grow light and um, on a heating mat because they need some heat. So we're gonna let these guys get started germinating and once we start seeing something, we'll come back and show you what we got. Have a good night. Welcome back everybody. As you can see, I have our beans all planted and I did put up the tool and we are going to see if that keeps out the birds and the any other varmints that might try coming in in the middle of the night. Um, I also secured it at the base with some rocks. Um, so we'll see, see how that does. Um, you know, I was thinking row covers, but with row covers, everything has to be down low and I have all these climbing things. So, I'm gonna see if this works. It's just an experiment. And then um, we'll be filling this in in a couple of weeks. And then I put a couple sunflowers here. And then we have another teepee here with more of the beans. I have golden wax beans, Kentucky pole beans, the Royal Burgundy, and Blue Lake. So I have those there. And then as you can see, we have, I'm gonna water those, finish watering those in. Um, 
give them a nice drink before they settle in for the night. And please, I'll always excuse the mess around here because we are a work in progress. And back here behind our Indian laurel, since they climb, I'm hoping that they'll get the sun that they need back here. Um, we have another um, TP of the beans. This is also the golden wax, the royal burgundy, and the blue lake back there. And then I have another variety of sunflowers here. These are the California green stripe. These are seeds that I got from a friend of mine that are probably at least 20 years old. So that they even germinated, I am absolutely thrilled. We'll see what they do. And then this variety is, oh, that's the other Kentucky blue right there. He doesn't look so good. He didn't, um, he didn't harden off so well. So, but we wanna see how that sunflower turns out. So we will continue this tomorrow um, and see how everything did overnight. And see if everything stayed safe with the netting. So have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is actually Monday morning. The weekend got really crazy. We're going to put a couple blurps in what we did this weekend. Um, we're kind of putting together a copulation of things for you, but we promised that we were going to show you after we put this um, tool up if it was going to protect the plants or not. So as you can see over here, um, the tool was up on that also and they are doing just fine. Um, it is it is a process, but to protect the plants, I'm willing to do that. So I put it up when I'm getting ready to go to bed at night. And um, before I go to work in the morning, I take it back off so they can have the sun for the day. And look at, they're starting to climb up the the little pole here the the one way over there is already about up to here so um i don't know if candace can get a couple shot of that but they're doing really good and they are staying protected and we have had the rat trying to figure out how to get in there so well I'm we got to explain that. this no, because now and, it looks like a rat went after. <laughs> yeah, a rat didn't get to this. Um, we noticed that you can see here that our lettuce is starting to go to seed. Um, and once it starts going to seed, it gets bitter and it doesn't taste good anymore. Um, but we have done the cut and come again method so many times on this lettuce. We, we, got, we got our money's worth out of it for sure. And the chickens got, you know, a lot of it also. And here's our little spinach patch and um, we did the cut and come again on the spinach and the kale. I might get one more harvest out of this, but I wanted to um, take as much as I could so that um, in case it gets too hot, which it has been, and it decides to bolt, that uh, we got our preservation. So we ended up with um, a big thing of a green smoothie that I made last night that I thought I hit record on, and no, I didn't. Um, I was just talking to myself, I guess. And um, we got five bags of the kale and spinach mix, and we froze those. So anytime that we wanna make green smoothies and there's no kale available, we can um, go in the freezer and take a chunk off and put it in our smoothies, and we'll have our kale and spinach from our garden, which I know is organic, and I know what was put on it which is nothing um so i'm very excited about that it's just the start of the preserving season so here we go have a wonderful week you guys thank you for watching and if you want to see more hit subscribe and please excuse me i've got a little bit of a head cold going on so i hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you again next week hello everyone and welcome back i wanted to take a minute to go over a couple of things before we upload this video. When we started doing the filming for
crazy bees. I wasn't sure um, if I was going to do YouTube or not. Um, so I started a couple videos and then I didn't do it for a little while. And But I really wanted you guys to have the information that I had started with because it had to do with seed starting. And I feel like that's very important. So the first seeds that we started were pepper seeds. And in those videos that we had started, I thought I was recording sometimes and it wasn't and it was a mess. So um, please excuse how crazy it's gonna bounce around a little bit. But the one thing I wanted to do was when we started the videos, um, we had started with planting pepper seeds. And I wanted to give you um, the names of the peppers that we had actually started. Um, because these are hot peppers and they are a little bit harder to germinate than um, your regular pepper seeds and they are kind of finicky to me. It's easy for some people. I had a hard time. Um, these are the super hot mix. This is the dragon's breath. Dasil. Trinidad scorpion chocolate. Apocalypse scorpion and the Korean dark green. This is the Tiger X and the Carolina Reaper. And this is the one I'm really proud of. Um, this, we started cayenne peppers last year. Um, I say um too much also, I gotta work on that. Uh, we started the cayenne peppers last year and I saved the seeds. And this is our first um, production of the plant with the seeds that we saved so I'm really happy with this and they look beautiful um, there you go again okay these ones here is the Craig's Grande Jalapeno this is another Dacil daddy's crazy yeah Craig's Grande Jalapeno and this is another one of our Cayennes and we got a couple more back here that are also a mix of these. The other ones that we had started were our tomatoes, as I had told you. These are our yellow pears tomatoes. They are so ready to go into the ground. Um, but when I plant these, I'll be taking off all of this and planting these all the way um, into the ground because these are all little tiny um, roots that are going to start where all this fuzz is. So, the, and they were, the yellow pear tomatoes are so good. The smaller tomatoes do better here than the larger ones, but I am going to try some of the, the larger ones and see how I do. Um, so when you look at this video, it's going to start with the beans. And we seed started the beans the same as we started the peppers. So I hope all of this makes sense. Have a great day.